Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're going to be reading This is the Best Book I've Ever Read on Domain Driven Design. So Domain Driven Design is a highly praised and highly used software design practice for effectively architecting software at scale. The idea is to model the real world domain as close as possible so that you eliminate unnecessary complexity. This is complexity that is not inherent to the problem you're solving, but exists due to how you chose to implement the solution. Unfortunately, a lot of books, videos, and blog posts teach DDD through the use of software patterns. By definition, these concepts do not actually exist in the real world and are thus unnecessary complexity. This leads to a lot of confusion as they're literally adding that which we're trying to remove. I've read and attended dozens of books, blog posts, and tech talks, and one book stands head and shoulders above the rest for clearly explaining effective DDD in a way that is also easy to understand and implement in your own software. The best DDD book. The best book on DDD I've ever read is Domain Modeling Made Functional by Scott Wolaschen who also happens to create some of the best resources for learning F Sharp. I love this book and think it does an excellent job at explaining DDD for a few reasons. The first is that it starts with a real world problem, building software for stakeholders. And this is important because all real world software is just a tool for real humans. And so if you start in kind of like the virtual world without the idea of stakeholders or goals or anything, then the software you're gonna create is gonna be very different than what you would actually create at your job or for a side project. And therefore when you would actually wanna use these practices. And it walks you through the process step-by-step -step of building software with domain experts. And so we're kind of getting away from like the idea of I'm creating software for someone um, because that kind of implies this idea of I build it, I ship it, and I'm done. But that's never actually how software is built. And that's never actually how software is used. And so to help you with this idea of like the full life cycle of, of software, it really focuses on building stable software to start with, which is great to have a solid foundation, but it also focuses on how can we build this foundation such that it's maintainable over time and evolvable. Because one of the constants is that there's always gonna be change in, in our software. So if we build it to be rock solid like this, we're gonna have to break it apart um, eventually because it's that's not gonna be what it needs to do in the next six months. The next thing it does is it refrains from infusing unnecessary complexity in the form of software patterns. Basically, no patterns are implemented at all except for those that naturally occur from actually talking to domain owners. They're actually in the real world, and so we actually want to model those things. And so it's actually necessary complexity, not unnecessary complexity. And the final thing I love is that it provides example code so clear that it's easily portable across languages, technologies, and projects. And so we're not only talking about you know real world examples, we're not only talking about the philosophy of software design, and principles we can use to you know, make it simple and effective um, long-term and at scale. But we have clear code examples that aren't using these you know, unnecessary complexity software patterns. They really are just doing exactly what we need to model the domain and nothing else, which means you can easily port it to whatever your project is, um, use those same principles, use the same kind of code that you've translated into you know, your own language, um, and it just works. There's no unnecessary complexity. And you know, as a bonus, it uses F Sharp, which is my favorite language, and I think is top tier for modeling domains without unnecessary complexity. This is one of those reasons why I think a lot of the example code in the book is so easy to port. And this is really just because it has a great type system. If you don't have a good type system, I don't know, pick a better language. Um, but I think this is a really, really good part of the book. Um, even if you don't know F Sharp, it's so, so easy to read. And so yeah, if you're interested in DDD, and particularly if you were kind of like I was, where you're reading all these books, you're watching all these tech talks, you're trying to use it, but it's still like hard, it still feels like it's not working, you're kind of like forcing it a little bit, um, I would highly recommend this book. I think it'll really help you understand the principles and how those principles can actually be used um, to really improve software at scale. Now, if you like this post, you might also like the best way to get started learning and building with F Sharp. For more resources, including some resources that Scott himself have written, um, how I got interested in F Sharp and kind of my journey to finding F Sharp and thinking it's so good for modeling domains. Um, and also why I'm moving from SvelteKit to F Sharp, which kind of is a deeper comparison of real technologies in real world in production um, and kind of giving my thoughts on them. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.